It has been a while since I recorded anything down here, but I'm going to need an awful lot of space because I need to unfold this thing onto a table. And so hi, I'm Ed Scar, and I am of course copying the long-running tradition of making a rollable battle mat from a canvas. Now this isn't quite the right canvas, this is actually an artist's canvas. Uh, usually people would use a plastic backed canvas or even a like worksheet for when you're painting your house, you don't want the floor to get covered in paint, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is what I have and so this is what I'm going to use. So we shall see how that works and hopefully we end up with a usable battle mat at the end of it. But first, I need to take it off of the frame. And whilst I'm doing that, I'll mention that this canvas came from Ratman, who found it for not very much at all, and has donated it for me to have a go at this project. So thank you very much to Ratman for the support. I'll also mention the Terrain Tutor, who is the main inspiration for this project. He's done a, a few different videos in the past on this sort of kind of rollable caulking battle mat. And whilst I'm doing some things a little bit differently, I will leave a link to uh, his videos in the description below. The short version, to briefly explain what this concept is, is to coat a canvas with a flexible acrylic filler, which once dry can be painted to make it look more interesting, but it can still be rolled for easy storage and transport. Now I do happen to have some of this uh, filler stuff deep in the depths of my garage. Um, it's down there somewhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need a torch. Whilst you can buy battle mats, of course, it's often far more interesting to go through the process of making one yourself. And yes, I can hear you furiously typing about removing staples like this, but these are some pretty hefty staples, and my normal staple remover can't handle them, and my claw hammer here is just a little bit too wide to actually grab onto them. Right, so that is the rather arduous task of removing the staples. However, it has left some damage. That's not necessarily a problem because the edges will be removed. Kind of, I'll spread this, the, the material out that I'm going to be dealing with at the moment all the way to the edge and then I'll like just trim it down uh, to make a nice neat edge. So, I have a frame, a surprisingly nice frame that might get used for something at some point, or it'll sit in the garage for the next 20 years. It says on, on the label a that it is pre-primed, which I didn't think was necessary for, for canvas, given my understanding at the moment, probably I want to use the back side, which has the kind of exposed cotton threading, because that'll give the uh, the caulking that I'll be using in a moment, something to grab onto and actually soak into, which is of course the point. But I do have to get on and, and do it at some point, and so I can finally reach for my flexible decorator's filler, which I hope is the right stuff. I also have some acrylic craft paints. I have some brown and I have some black. Uh, the problem I might have is that this particular brown craft paint, as it dries, it becomes a lot less rich of a colour. We shall see how that affects it when it dries, but to get that done we actually need to get started. So I'm going to grab a knife and cut these open, and I think I'm going to put on a podcast in the background. So my process begins. Because my canvas is not a specifically plastic backed canvas, which is the, the usual kind of um, work mat that people recommend for this type of project, I wasn't sure if the filler would soak through. Now I suspected it wouldn't, but I didn't want to take any chances because if it did soak through, it would fuse with my table and then I'd be in an awful lot of trouble and I'd have to sand down all the way through the filler, re refinish the table and, and that would be a lot of work. So to prevent any of that mess or damage to the table, I put down some bin bags as a barrier. And I tape the bags down and then I tape the canvas down on top of that. 
I dumped out a tube and a third of the filler onto a paint roller thingy. Uh, paint roller tray, apparently. And put in a little bit of craft paint. Now, I didn't want to add too much paint as these are water-based. The overall mix will shrink slightly as the water evaporates away, and that can lead to cracking or warping. But if I add just a little bit, it's probably going to be fine. Now, it's not such a big issue, I just don't want to take any chances. Now, mixing the paint in was a bit of a struggle. I just about managed it with some effort. Uh, some of the other channels, like the Train Tutor and others, have done this type of thing and mixed in some IPA, isopropyl alcohol, to thin the mix down without leading to the warping and cracking from uh, adding water. Now, I wish I had remembered this when I was mixing because it would have made it an awful lot easier. And it would also have made spreading it around a little easier as well. Because when I got to putting down the canvas, I again have a poor selection of tools uh, available to me, and that led to issues. The spreader that I'm using is quite narrow, and so I'm having to make many passes to smooth out the surface. But every time I do a pass, I leave a line behind, and they're all adding up. And it sort of looks like a badly iced cake. Don't, don't eat this stuff, it, it doesn't taste good. Well, at this point, I finally remembered that IPA. A little too late to mix it in, but what I could do was take a crumpled plastic bag, dip the bag in the IPA, and then pat down the surface of the filler to smooth it out. Now, the IPA just prevents the filler from sticking to the bag, which it really tried to do anyway, uh, but using a crumpled bag, I wasn't creating a perfectly smooth surface, but it was smoothing out some of the kind of the lines from the spreader. Hopefully a nice middle ground that looks like ground, I guess. And at this point, I realized another thing that I had forgotten because I was paying oh so much attention to this. Most of the videos about this process suggest adding some sand into the mix before spreading it down on the canvas. And that just gives it a little bit of the right texture. Well, I do have some sand, and so I sprinkled some on the top in little patches, but also quite heavily in this line that I would turn into a road. I wondered how well this would grab, so I gave it the best chance by pressing it down with the empty filler tube as like a rolling pin sort of thing. And you can see yet another example of poor planning, because I put this road directly across the short side of the mat, which is the most uninteresting possible place for it. I added a side road and that helped a little, but it would have been better on a long diagonal. Now I did try another little experiment here with some bicarb of soda. Uh, I was, kind of the idea was to make some ploughed field effect, but this didn't stick even remotely at all, and so it's not worth bothering with uh, in future. Well, it's been the 24 hours, or actually it's close to 48 hours now. It's all dried up, it seems pretty flexible. One thing I've already done is I've uh, swept off a lot of the sand. Roughly about half of the sand came away. I feel like if I was gonna try this type of thing again, I would probably go for mixing the sand in, or at least a little bit of sand in, to give a bit of a uniform texture. Because one thing this suffers with is the texture on the surface. It is very uneven, very lumpy and streaky. And part of that is because I only have this very narrow, very thin spreader. And so I'm making many, many passes to smooth out an area. And there's a few spaces here and there where it's not exactly gone on um, all that smooth. There's a few gaps. But there's enough talking because the important part of a battle mat of this type is that it can be rolled up very easily without any damage. So the proof is in the pudding. Well, no, I guess the proof of something like this would be use over multiple months and being rolled and unrolled many, many times. Um, but we can at least roll it out once. Let's see how it goes. And yeah, there we go. One rolled up battle mat. It's got a surprising amount of weight to it. I'm not sure why I'm surprised. It's got a tube and a half of filler in it. 
<laughs> so it's kind of about the weight of a tube and a half of filler, unsurprisingly. That's gone really nicely. There's no cracking, there's no wrinkling. Some more of the sand has come loose, I notice. Although that might just be because I didn't sweep up everything. Oh yeah, there's almost nothing coming off it. It's just the tiny, tiny bits that I missed the first time around. So I've got to the point where I've proved that, uh, that it does in fact work. The technique is sound. I believe this in advance, given how many people have done this before me. But it's nice to, uh, to kind of do it for yourself and uh, see the effects more directly. However, it doesn't look particularly effective. The brown is quite kind of this dull, very pale brown that's not really what I was after. And the road is just the colour of the sand. And so, what I need to do is start painting. Whilst you shouldn't mix too much paint into the filler itself to prevent the cracking and warping, you can paint it in heavy layers on top as it should stick fairly well, like filler is designed for paint to stick to. The reason to mix a little bit of paint in with the filler is so that if over use it does crack or get damaged kind of over time, those gaps aren't just bare white which would stand out, but rather this kind of pale brown and it's not quite as noticeable. Once my first layer of the paint was nearly dry, I hit the road with some grey rattle can. I also used tan and green rattle cans that I happen to have to give just a bit of variation to the mud of the battle mat. As that's the biggest surface colour, I wanted to add some variety to it. Although I felt the overspray from the road was a little bit harsh, and so I covered that over with a nice border of the brown again. Well, as any nerd, as many projects on the go at any given time, I have this little tank for bolt action on the way. Some brown stripes from the airbrush to create a camo pattern. That should look pretty cool once it's done, but by painting it over my battle mat, the overspray is adding to my variety of tones. Well, as the airbrush was out and needed cleaning anyway, why not throw down some lines on the mat? Some greeny black edge for the road and some white for road markings. Now there's a good reason why I don't use the airbrush very much, because this simple section of lining took an hour and a half because my airbrush just clogged constantly even when I was just putting pure water through it. But hopefully these road markings are generic enough for use in any game system, but it makes the map just that little bit more visually interesting. So it's had another day for all the paint to dry. Um, I can probably deal with the edges now because all of these kind of Tatty ratty edges. I've been keeping them on so that there's no gaps when I actually cut the edge. Um, paint and the filler has gone over where the actual edge would be. And so that naturally means that I now have to actually cut it. And I've got various cutting implements and some bushes I've been working on. And so um, let's get to that. Cutting went also very smoothly, even with just scissors. I did make sure to tend towards curving to the outside so that I didn't end up curving into the mat and that would have been very annoying. It's easy to cut some more off, it's much more difficult to cut some on. Although I did find here that even though I kept the edges on to make sure I got the filler over the whole thing, I didn't manage to get filler over the whole thing. Apparently my spreading was worse than I thought because there's even now just a few gaps here and there where I didn't quite get filler all of the way to the edge. There we go, it's, uh, it's done and despite all of the imperfections that I've mentioned, some of the tatty edges and the kind of rough surface, it's, it's pretty much usable. Now, had I known when I started what I know now, what I probably would have done is use slightly less of the caulking on the first uh, pass and then do a second coat, because that then means I can fill up all of the gaps that are missed by the first coat and have a better opportunity to smooth it out as well. Also, with the kind of the sand that I used for the road here, the texture of the whole thing would have been improved by mixing that sand in with the caulking and actually have it in even spread. 
uh, would have given kind of this rough surface effect and again hidden some of the lines that you get from the tiny tiny scraper that I was using which I seem to have misplaced but it rolls up nicely um, nice and quick and it unrolls eh, just about fine the ends are kind of curling which is sort of what you'd expect from a rolled piece like this but that's easy to solve by just placing some terrain pieces at the edges kind of in the corners maybe a rule book or something just to hold it down and once it's been down for a few minutes it does tend to sit relatively flat now it is also somewhat dull by itself but inherently this is always designed to go with other things it will have trees it will have buildings and it will of course have the models that you're playing with on top of it and so it being a little bit plain by itself isn't really something I'm worried about. The variations of colour and having the road give it enough. Now one thing that I think is really really important that none of the videos that have come before have stated is how much caulking should you use for how much surface area. Now this is a one metre by half a metre canvas so this is half a metre squared and I think for the first coat one tube, exactly one tube of the caulking would be the correct amount for this. Now, I certainly think that a second coat over the top to clear up the uh, the kind of the bad edges and the threadbare spots would be helpful. I suspect that the second coat wouldn't need to be quite as thick as the first, so probably one and a half, which is about what I used, but in two coats. So a full tube for a half square meter, and then a half tube for the half square meter as the second uh, would have been what I would like to do. If there's anyone who wants to buy me another canvas, I can have another go and maybe improve on things. But while I have got that side done, there is something to be said for the back side. We're actually the front, this is the front of the canvas originally. And just because I've done all of this work on, the, on that side doesn't mean that this side has to be left bare. So at some point I might spray this up, maybe grey and do some cobblestone or kind of tan and do some wood grain effect for a, a great big wooden floor, something like that might be possible. And even when it's rolled up, only, only a certain amount of it, kind of that much, is exposed. So it's not like it's going to be fragile and worn away as it's being transported. So do feel free to ask any questions or any comments that you might have about this in the comment section down below. And while I do make these videos as a hobby for myself, some people have asked to support me and, and keep me going. So there is a donation link in the description as well. Someone asked if I was setting up a Patreon soon and I'm really not popular enough for that to even be worth my time. So it's just a, a one-off donation link down there at the moment. But for now, my battle mat is complete just as I had wanted it, although maybe a little tattier than I expected. And um, yeah, that means the video can end. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Edgar, and I always will be. The ends are kind of curling, which is sort of what you'd expect for a rolled piece.